Righto, it's been a little while since my last upload here, so I thought I'd put together a little sneak preview depending on when the video is released. You may see this either prior or after the official launch of what we've been working on for Cyvex. And, and what that is, is a what we call a Lambda to CAN multi-channel unit. Now you can see it over on the right hand side here that's a, a case that's in manufacture and over on the left is the internal of it the board which I've set up for the last month that I've been doing testing and calibration work now this is a extremely exciting product you can see the connector here is quite comprehensive and we have listed one two three four lambda sensors but it'll do up to eight so anybody running a eight cylinder engine can simply purchase one of these and run one lambda sensor or oxygen sensor however you want to refer to it it's up to you you can run one of them per cylinder and all be done and handled and processed through one box now while it's not unique we have in this unit uh, an exhaust pressure correction now I don't have time to go and research what everybody else has done. However, I do believe the unique feature that you'll find with ours is that I have set up and Cybex has implemented this. This will be open to other users. You'll see what's referred to as an exhaust pressure correction table. The beauty of this while it's populated with figures that I myself have been using for a long time it's open to the end user so I'll get more into the detail of that a bit later on in the video but um, we have the option to run two exhaust pressure sensors so you could do one per bank on a v-type engine or if it's a split bank engine in terms of a grouping on an inline so you have those options which is a very exciting prospect Keep in mind, this isn't just about turbine inlet pressure, as its acronym is here on this little label that I've got on the sensor that I use, but it's also very, very prevalent in turbine exit pressure. I think some people like to generically refer to that as a, as a dump pipe off a turbo. Now, I'd refer you to a couple of my previous videos where I talk extensively about that, but that is a very real known issue, and and we've, I myself and Cyvex and Life Racing have come up with some strategies to to accommodate everybody for that. So that'll be stuff that you have to keep keep abreast of, and there'll be a release on that shortly as well. But back to the main topic of the video, the Lambda to Can unit. So the question I get asked all the time is, you know, why can't I just use oxygen sensors or why can't I just use lambda probes or why can't I just use an, an exhaust gas temperature sensor to be more correct because that's the most common way to do it. The, the fact is you, you can use either a lambda sensor or you can use an EGT probe. The problems around EGT probes are multiple. The, the biggest one is the experience of the user. And what I mean by that is you, you can get people who have 20, 30 years of experience, but there's an old saying going that one year of shit experience can be repeated 30 times, and that makes up for your 30 years of experience. That doesn't put everybody in that basket, but I'm sure quite a few people could could agree with that statement but that aside EGT probes are excellent if you use the right type I happen to manufacture my own of those I'll do a video separate to this one about that subject maybe a bit later when I have time but by far the easiest way especially for people who don't have experience is an oxygen sensor an oxygen sensor is relatively immune to the idiosyncrasies that can affect an exhaust gas temperature output. So look, having said all of that, I want to show you a picture that I've prepared here. 
So if I just open this up, I've got a bit of a folder showing various examples of how people measure exhaust oxygen concentrations inside any type of engine. So one of the most common engines is your typical normally aspirated type. You can see here lambda sensor mounted in each individual cylinder. This one's tucked in behind. Now that, that's that's great, right? We can we can do that. But one of the biggest influences for this, you see it here in a turbo application. So these four pipes merge down. You can see the wastegate. Here's the turbocharger snuck in underneath all of that stuff. One of the biggest effects here is exhaust pressure. Now, some people will argue you don't really need to know what the readings are coming out of here because of the effects of exhaust pressure, but where our unit, I believe, has a distinct advantage because of the twin bank allocations and the twin pressure sensors, we can very easily mount our pressure sensor in the turbine inlet. Again, I have videos covering this extensively, so I'd invite everybody to go have a look at my channel, and if you've got the time to spare, it's well worthwhile to check out those videos. But going on to what I was saying, we can fit one pressure sensor here. We can assign four of these O2 sensors to bank number one. So there's your bank, there's your four cylinders. And we have the beauty of, because we've got another exhaust bank pressure sensor native to the Lambda to CAN unit, we can mount that near the end of the exhaust where, as I said in one of my previous videos, the turbine exit pressure starts off high, right at the discharge of the turbine housing, and ends up low, effectively zero, what it is near the tailpipe. And you can validate yourself whatever the corrections are for the individual sensors that, that you want to use in our unit, no problem. We mount a pressure sensor here, we mount another pressure sensor right at the back where the pressure effect is very low, and we put our fifth O2 sensor and our bung, near the end, so obviously it's not affected by ingress of, of ambient air, but close enough to the end where the pressure effects are minimal to zero, and you can derive your own pressure correction curves. And that, I believe, will be a, an extremely arousing proposition for a lot of people who are into this sort of thing. You know, where would you use this? So ideally, I deal with a lot of people who run engine dynamometers um, using our gear, using our products that we supply and every day I'll get questions you know is our lambda sensor accurate what do we base it off I get 50 different examples of people using different equipment I have to make a separate video about the standards of equipment people use to calibrate and what they go off that that deserves a video on its own on that subject but we have two separate calibration grade meters which we use so two different meters, two serial numbers, two production dates, two sets of harnesses, two sets of laboratory grade sensors. And that's from a reputable company, right? So they've sold thousands upon thousands of these meters to people like General Motors Research Center, and they're a proven known quantity. So we don't fuck about and waste our time with rubbish claims over the internet or YouTube or Askbook or whatever these other platforms are that people tend to go for for information we deal with what professionals use so you can rest assured if you're going to buy a lambda to can unit off us and you're going to buy which is a topic i'm going to get in get on to specifically here you're going to buy a calibrated lambda sensor from someone like myself who has the means we have the test equipment we've been doing this for years so we calibrate these sensors here to an extremely high level of accuracy and uh, the sort of levels we're talking about are down in percentage terms. We're talking about sort of under plus or minus 0.3 of a percent. Uh, they're, they're extremely, extremely accurate and repeatable. Now here's an example of a turbo, another turbocharged engine from a little known manufacturer named BMW. May, may, may or may not have heard of them, but Again, you can see it's on an engine dyno test cell. We've got individual lander sensors stuck into each pipe. And it's, again, it's a simple, easy, quick 
way to balance out your engine. Once you've done the balancing procedure and you get a bit of an indication how the exhaust gas temperature reflects to these, um, no problem. You just unplug these, put your bungs in and, and just rely on the Don Mega EGT pros to do the work for you. Well, let's, some people may or may not be interested in having a look what we've been doing. So yeah, we, when we got this, you know, obviously pre-production, we've got a we've got a board, we set up a test thing here. So what we've done, some people may or may not find this interesting, but the lambda sensors can draw obviously quite a bit of current. So you'll see an individual fuse per four, right? So if we were going to do this as an eight cylinder, we'd replicate this sort of setup over on this side. So we've got like a 20 amp fuse to cover the heater current for these four lambda sensors. We've run this unit for over 200 hours in testing while we're doing validation. Now, I can personally guarantee you it'll it'll work and it'll be solid for you. It won't give you any dramas. And then we've got a separate fuse connection for the power to the board. Now the beauty of it being CAN based is we can pump this into any decent ECU. So as long as their CAN structure's open, um, no dramas. We can feed information to, from, assign it into this unit, pump it out to something like a uh, mini dash display if you wanted to do that as well again that that's that's an option that's that's easily and readily available here's an example of our outputs so this is the Cyvex tiny dash extremely powerful and popular popular little unit and you can set up to eight different displays this is quite interesting here so the terminology we use is raw so this is the signal which is actually affected by exhaust pressure and its output so you have lamb one and you have or sorry the lamb one raw and you have lamb one and you can see the effect of exhaust pressure between these two obviously there's no exhaust pressure so there's no difference between them what i will show you is a graph during testing which is quite Right, here we go. This is what we want to see. Let's open this up large. So what we have plotted out here is, I'll give you a description of the setup first because it's worth addressing this. So everything I do is set to a calibrated standard. So what we have here is a description of the sensor lambda one channel on the lambda to can unit. And we have it versing our laboratory NTK unit as well. And we also output the lambda rule and we've got our own test chamber i have previous versions of this listed in my prior videos you're more than welcome to look at it there's no secret there but our current technology stuff we don't share uh, suffice to say it's it's very similar to what the to what the previous videos are but uh, all the devil's in the detail as they say so that's stuff we keep close to our chest but what we have the ability to do is we can apply pressure to our testing chamber and give you a real world indication of what the raw outputs are of both the laboratory grade independent meter and also the lambda to can meter and you can see these represented in the red and the gray and then the output here is in blue which is the corrected version taking into account the effect of exhaust pressure now that's how we define the curves you know we don't guess this and it's way, way, way too difficult to do in situ, uh, say on a test cell like the previous picture that I showed you with the exhaust headers glowing red hot on a, on a rally car. There's way too many variables. And I think that's what stuffs up a lot of people is they don't have control of those, of those different aspects. But anyway, this is how we define it and, and we developed it. You can see as soon as the exhaust gas pressure is released out of the chamber, the raw values go straight back up to the output value um, and there's an extremely tight correlation between between those some may ask what pressure have you tested this up to so it's an extremely dangerous profession as you can imagine so we've we've run this up to 4000 millibar 4 bar which is quite a high level of turbine inlet pressure 
the sensors work, the outputs work, um, everything is the way we say it is. You won't have any issues running them that way. What's the benefit of running our Lambda to CAN unit versus something else? Well, the one thing I will say to you, the big benefit of using this and using our calibrated Lambda sensors, they're guaranteed, right? So we spend multiple hours per sensor. Uh, none of this is quick, none of it's automated. You can't rush the job. Everything's done to a high level of precision. We've invested thousands upon thousands of dollars in the testing equipment, the procedures, the time. I don't even want to think about it, but we do hundreds of them. Uh, we keep in stock all of the popular types of NTK LZA derivative sensors. You can pick which one you like. We, we've got the ones we choose, the LZA09, LZA08s. It just depends, but we've got them in stock, ready to go. So those sensors, getting back to the reason why we do them and why we've developed the unit the way we have. And I'll show you actually why it's probably quite interesting to people. So we'll open this up here. Righto. These sensors, when you get them, a lot of people don't realise this, but on the box, uh, this is a shipment that just turned up a couple of days ago, they're done in batch numbers, right? So on that box itself, you'll see a code here. So this is ZZ14. When you buy them off me, these boxes and what's inside the box will always match together, right? So the sensor on the hex body of the sensor will have this batch code stamped in it. Now, what that defines is obviously the production time of when the sensor was made and, and where they came from. But what you find is different batch codes of sensors have different characteristics inside them. And even within a set batch code, you'll get different characteristics. I get asked all the time, well, how big is the difference? Why can't I just use a generic curve as supplied by Cyvex or your, your competitor? Well, you can't fucking use a generic curve because I've shown many times, especially if you're dealing with rich applications, and by rich I mean stuff down to 0.58 lambda, 3.7 odd to 1 in methanol AFR terms. The bigger the disparity in the accuracy of the sensor, the bigger the disparity in the output, the richer you go. And it's ultra critical ultra, ultra critical to make sure that each one of these is hand bespoke calibrated. And again, I've, I've got a separate video detailing detailing that. You can see we, we go through stacks of them. These are just handwritten, ready for engraving once they've been calibrated. But we do lots and lots and lots of those. Look, I hope that's been mildly interesting to everyone. Um, I'm very excited about this about this product. It's been a long, long time in gestation and has taken a lot to get it up and going, but um, it's extremely exciting. And anybody who's got an engine dynamometer especially or a chassis dyno where they've got setups where they can quickly and easily whack these in, we, we can set you up with templates Obviously, I can set you up with calibrated Lambda sensors ready to go off the shelf. Um, and you've got a basically a guaranteed certified accurate unit that'll do over and above what you could ever have imagined in a Lambda to CAN unit. Righto, thank you.